Welcome to episode 230 of the Shared Security Show. And joining me this week are the amazing and magical co-host duo, Scott Wright and Kevin Johnson. Who are you guys? That gets, uh, and I'm, I'm doing my magic. <laughs> and as Kevin will uh, now say, I missed a, a golden opportunity yes. with this particular episode 230. That, uh, well, Kevin, go ahead and say it. it. It could have been an entire episode about Section 230 and how dumb it is that people want to overturn it. But no, it's okay. We missed the pun. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, so Kevin can roast me for that. Um, maybe the next, uh, no, there is no next 230. I, well, I was going to say, <laughs> so, that don't work, man. not happening yeah. <laughs> ever again. But, um, but I did want to mention, uh, as you can see, uh, you know, Kevin and I called each other in advance and we, we decided <laughs> to wear the same shirt uh, to the podcast, which is, yeah, yeah. this is the new uh, Secure Ideas swag that I received, um, which uh, we mentioned this a couple months ago. Hopefully some of you uh, of our listeners t- took advantage of uh, purchasing the ch- this shirt because it uh, was for charity. Um, all the proceeds go to St. Jude's, which is, as we all all know is a is a wonderful organization so yeah. uh thank you kevin for these shirts they are amazing i i am actually really excited about how nice they came out like i was yeah. I, I i've gotten shirts before and it's been like uh, okay um and if you missed out um our plan is to do a charity run as often as possible like we we think this is a good idea and helping out is good so we'll see yeah. what happens and I'll catch you on the next time. Awesome. Yes. And, and uh, next time, maybe we'll, all three of us will have these shirts. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, let's get into our first story, which is legislators introduce bipartisan digital privacy bill that may not be doomed. Uh, I, because as we I all like know, the, I like any, the end of the- <laughs> yes. Yeah. Every privacy legislation that is uh, even attempted to come through Congress um, and we'll talk about gun control. That's a whole other topic, <laughs> but yeah. uh, never seems to go through um, because no one can agree on anything in Congress. Um, I, see, I don't think that's why it is. No, why is it? No. I think it's that they're just useless. I, <laughs> just useless. I believe that everybody in Congress, <clears throat> most people at the uh, national level uh, in politics, they just don't seem to care about what their constituents want. Um, no. And so it's not that they can't agree. If you talk to any of the Congress people, the majority of them are on the same page about privacy, which you may not be aware of this listener, but our <laughs> entire system is based on majorities. And <laughs> that would imply yeah. they could pass it, but they haven't. Some interesting. And that's, that's bipartisan. Bipartisan, the majority the of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting so, just from looking at the wording there um, and, and some of the conclusions drawn in the article um, that it doesn't seem to have a flavor of having been influenced by lobbyists, you know, that where usually you kind of get taken away from the public interest. It seems to be pretty pure. Yeah. You mean like, like Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know if I agree with that. But I don't know that, that doesn't surprise me. Just to be clear, I, I'm, yeah, it is surprising. What what I found interesting about the law, I don't know if either of you read read the law um, or the outline. Um, the summary. I read the article. <laughs> yeah, so the article. I'm there, not reading the 64 page. Uh, and then from track. the article, it links to the the proposed yeah, yeah. law, and we should say proposed because it's, yeah. it's not passed yet. Um, and that the outline. And what what what. I was surprised by, and I don't know that I like this, but I understand why it's done, is how much of the law really just says the Federal Trade Commission needs to do something, right? Like enforcement. We're going to pass a law. Yeah. Well, no, 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 not just enforcement, but also the Federal Trade Commission has to create a framework. The FTC has to create what is reasonable usage. The FTC has to do this. The FTC has to do that. And I, I actually think that's 
and I, I want to be very clear. I'm not sure I, I like that because I'm a big opponent of the idea of handing power to the executive branch. Um, but I think that's not one of the reasons why it's possible that this may go forward, right? Because they're not trying to come up with the specifics. Right. So, yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, we've that... been through this actually in Canada, surprisingly, <laughs> not long ago, where, you know, a new privacy law was passed, but it really didn't have a lot of specifics in it. And, and the intent was the regulations would be developed later. And that's what's happened. They actually came into effect recently. Mm -hmm. And so it's not an unusual situation. Now, you may argue who's in charge of drafting the law overarching and who's in charge of drafting the regulations could introduce some controversy, but I think the the intent of the general process probably is is not uh, unprecedented. Yeah, it's it's definitely not unprecedented. I just my concern with it is that it passes and we call it this big win for privacy, and we ignore the fact that when DeSantis wins in twenty twenty four. Uh, and I want to be very clear, I'm not a DeSantis supporter um, at all. I'm the opposite. But um, the administration can change it, right? Like, it's much easier to change what the Federal Trade Commission says is so than it is to change what Congress says is so. And that's why I say is I don't know yeah. whether I like it, but I don't know whether I dislike it. Because if if they went for more specifics, I don't think they could have gotten it to pass Congress and Right, so there's yeah, pros baby and cons steps. To, yeah. to both, yeah. and I don't know where I stand on it. Yeah, I, I think it. I think I mean this is the most bipartisan bill I've seen um, come across. So that's why a lot of people are talking, and you know, in the industry, this actually has a chance of passing. Um, but you know, the government will as always surprise us and <laughs> and you also wonder what else they're going to add to this right like that's does has nothing to do with privacy which i forget what those are called where they add those things to the bills, bills and then, or, uh... they end up not going forward because something else has been added or tried to be s snuck in at the pork, third uh, pork. yeah pork barrel <laughs> yeah pork yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. So, and that's interesting, just uh, the Canadian perspective, because I know. Um, yeah, we don't do that. Privacy laws, uh, yeah, very different. You have a whole commission, and and things are run a lot differently in Canada. Um, and you guys actually seem to agree more on things. We're agreeable <laughs> to get things. I don't done, think there's so. dispute in that. Well, it's because you're so nice and polite. That's why. <laughs> Americans, not so much. <laughs> Every hack follows the same pattern. First, hackers exploit a human error, like a leaked key or a secret left in code. They gain a foothold and then pivot, moving from one compromised system to the next. Sound familiar? Teleport breaks this cycle. Open source Teleport gives every engineer, every piece of hardware, every application an identity, replacing secrets like passwords and keys with auto-expiring identity-based certificates. The Teleport platform reduces the opportunity for human error, increasing productivity, and revolutionizing security and compliance. Learn why the most visionary businesses in the world choose Teleport at GoTeleport.com. So, uh, why don't we jump into Aware Much, Scott? Yes, thanks, Tom. Aware Much. Uh, this installment is brought to you by Click Armor, the first fully gamified security awareness training and engagement platform. And I'm going to throw it back to Tom now because it's a story that Tom came up with. Uh, yes. Uh, well, a story that happened to me. Um, I had just purchased a, a used car recently and. Uh, it had a uh, the car has a navigation system that's built into it, and of course, me, the privacy and security person. Um, as soon as I'm test driving the car, I'm you know flipping through the the system, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. There is the previous owner's uh, home location, their work, uh, and over a hundred different locations that they had gone to 
um, some very recently um, through their their GPS navigation system that's built into the car. Um, and so I wanted to just give this a reminder to everyone that when you are selling a car, um, and by the way, I did ask the dealer, I just talked to them. I said, Hey, did you know that this person, the previous owner, that all their stuff was in, you know, their GPS, all their personal information. And they had said, Oh, just say, they just said, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like huh. didn't even like care, honestly. Um, but the, but the message that I, that I want to just tell everyone is that, um, the dealer is not going to erase or reset, um, the navigation system or the car stereo. Um, this is something that they don't even think about when you're trading a car in or you're selling a car to somebody else. Um, you as the owner need to reset and, uh, you know, erase the personal information that might be in one of these systems. Yeah, really, really good point. And in fact, um, it's kind of funny when you think about it, you know, you could, if you really wanted to screw around with people as you're turning in your used car, you could put your home address as like 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue or, or 1000 South Ocean <laughs> Boulevard, you know, in Florida, you don't want you know, to live there. Um, <laughs> just for fun. Um, but you're right. I mean, there's certainly an opportunity there for, you know, stalking or harassment, you know, uh, of, of the previous owner. Um, you know, I guess generally not a huge risk, but it's something we definitely want to remind people to, uh, to do. Well, I, so I, I can see, I can see some risks to it, right? Um, you, you buy a car, it's a used car, so there's a chance it doesn't work well. Um, and I can totally see unreasonable people showing up at the previous owner's house saying, yeah. Hey, the transmission's bad. <laughs> this car car. Sucks. I didn't buy it from you, but damn That's it, it's true. Your well, fault. I mean, it could have been I, a private so sale, I, right? You know, off, off a of classifieds and, and yeah, you mm -hmm. can definitely sure. yeah. <laughs> retaliate against the guy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I see another risk, but this is a risk that probably it's because I daydream a lot, uh, which is why I need a car to drive for me. Um, but I could totally see getting into the car, not thinking about it, hitting home and then just blindly <laughs> ending up at somebody else's house. <laughs> right. Like I, I, the number of times over the years I've ended up where I was going, like leaving work, going home and then realizing, oh my gosh, I don't remember any of that ride. <laughs> Yeah. If the nice navigation lady's voice says, take a left, I take a left. I... <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's it is a little scary because, you know, just thinking about, you know, you know, someone's home address, their work address, all the places they go between yeah. work and, you know, kids school and and their names, the contact list was in there too. So I yeah. had the first, first name and last name of the family. I knew who their kids yeah. were. I knew all of that because the Bluetooth wasn't reset either. Yeah. So yeah. their whole, you know, when you, when you connect your yep. phone yeah. to the car, it downloads the contact list. So, um, I had hundreds of contacts of this person and you could easily put yeah, together a yeah. profile. You didn't mention that part when Googling. you were briefing us ahead of time, but that's, you know, that's a huge, huge risk for sure. Uh, yeah, Beyond yeah, the yeah, GPS. Yeah. yeah. That and, was just one aspect. And even, you know, so, it's a great opportunity to remind people that, you know, anything that has a plug on it these days that you, that you can make that's electronic generally yeah. now kind of wants to connect to the mothership and, you know, get configured and stuff like that. And I think we've covered stories in the past where like baby monitors, somebody bought a used baby monitor and, you know, the, it somehow was connected to the previous owner's account information. And they actually saw, you know, images from, <laughs> from somebody else's uh, camera. Um, and so you just have to remember now that anything that is electronic and, and likely yeah. is connected, if it's been purchased, used, or if you're selling it, uh, second to, to a second owner. Yeah. You really got to watch out for the, uh, the privacy issues. Probably should do a show on, uh, selling your house because yeah. think about all the connected devices, nest thermometers and a ring, yeah. um, you know, all, all cameras and all of that, like usually most people are just going to leave that or forget about it, that it's still attached to the house. And then you sell it to somebody else. Well, that's we, interesting. We just had that happen with my youngest daughter. Um, so we went to sign up for an account for her. Uh, I want to say it was a Microsoft account. And the Microsoft account's like, okay, well, you know, what's your phone number? Right. And so we punched in, oh, 
yeah, it was her. We bought her a new computer. And it said, would you like to sign into your Microsoft account? It's like, okay, she doesn't have a Microsoft account. I don't think. I She's had computers for a long time. And so I typed in her phone number. Now, she's had her phone number for a few years now. Um, and it popped up and said, oh, that your account exists. So without even thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I must have set up her account before. You know, yeah, send me the reset link. And it did a reset, and all of a sudden I had access to this other guy's wow. Microsoft account. Now, in this case, I don't want to say funny haha, but funny odd. This guy was actually murdered. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and yeah, he had a very unique name. I went and searched it to sign, like, because I wanted to see, like, oh man, this is bad. I've got access to No, this you wanted to stalk account. him. <laughs> I wanted to stalk him, yes. Um, and he had been murdered. Uh, wow. So I couldn't – it wasn't a need to reach out and say, hey, we, we hijacked your account. Sorry. Um, but uh, you know, things tied to phone numbers, tied to houses, tied to cars. It's it, – we are – I won't say too connected, but we are very Very connected. connected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So um, – this installment of Aware Much has been brought to you by Click Armor, the first gamified security awareness training and engagement platform. And uh, something I wanted to remind people of is Christmas is coming. Well, like Christmas, oh, Christmas, like Christmas in Christmas, July, Cybersecurity Awareness <laughs> Month in October is coming. And when you take away the summer holiday months when nobody does anything and it's hard to reach people at work, you really kind of just have, you know, the end of June and, and September, right, to get ready. And if you're like me and, and most people in October, you think, ah, oh, next year I'm going to do better. I'm going to do something innovative and, and fun. And uh, you know what? <laughs> Time flies and, and you're in October again and nothing happens, right? So I'm take this public service announcement to, to say, you know, get ready for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, October. Um, start planning before the end of or before the summer starts. And with that in mind, Click Armor actually has a little a special right now we call Quick Start Bundles, which are uh, th for $325, you get six weeks of access for up to 100 people. And that's kind of an ideal thing for, especially for a small business trying to do Security Awareness Month in a, in a fun way. But it's also a good way for enterprises to try out gamification and see what it, how it works for 100 people. And then we can get together and plan plan something bigger for October. So um, that's our that's our little nice. pitch for Click Armor today. Um, now, if you're listening to this in September, it's a little late. But no, no, actually, you could probably start something still uh, with us because we can do it really quick. But uh, go to clickarmor.ca/slash/quickstart and um, learn more about how you can get that three hundred twenty five dollars six week deal. Let's move on to our last story, which is. Firefox rolls out total cookie protection by default to all users with the latest version of Firefox. So uh, this was a, a recent announcement by Mozilla. Um, and this is the first thing that I noticed is that I had always thought that Firefox had a similar type of cookie protection, but I was wrong. It was called enhanced tracking yeah. protection, which actually just blocks third-party trackers through a list, right? Like a, a blacklist, essentially. But what this does is this creates, essentially, you call it a cookie jar, mm -hmm. right? For each website that you visit. And instead of allowing trackers to, you know, figure out your behavior on multiple sites, they just get to see the behavior of that indiv individual site. Um, so that's a yeah. good thing, right? Because... Um, the other the other advantage of this is that it still allows analytics to still work for that particular site. So site operators, you know, will often complain that, uh, well, the cookies are all blocked. So you have no idea of, you know, how many people are coming to the site or what links are clicking on. And, and that is obviously something that businesses need to know. But what they don't need to know is, right, like how those how those trackers follow you across the Web, which is this recent enhancement to Firefox is preventing. Yep. I, I think that 
works for you know everybody that uh, is using the easiest way to track people, which is cookies, right? Um, but as we know, yeah. you know, more sophisticated ad networks use more sophisticated methods of identifying or th- fingerprinting, I think they call it, right, uh, of, of your browser and understanding who you are when you come without cookies. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Um, there are other ways to do fingerprinting, but cookies are the most popular mm-hmm. yeah. way of doing it. And, and bluntly, not just the easiest, but the most capable way mm-hmm. of doing it, right? Um, I, I find this interesting. I'm curious. I'm curious to see how effective it will end up being in the long run. Um, because as we know, every time a control comes out, you know, the effort is made to change that, uh, you know, to work around it, whatever. Um, I, I like to see this. I, I'm, I'm really curious at how effective it's going to be. I, I, you know, Firefox people are smarter than I am, I guess. Um, so I'm happy to see it, but I expect things like GTM and, you know, the various analytics cookies to, to immediately start working on other yeah. mechanisms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I know Mozilla has taken a lot of heat, you know, more recently, um, just with some of their practices, right. Around like how they make money and other things. It's, it, it the company itself has just changed quite a bit over the years, but I, I still, it's still my primary browser. Um, it's still what I recommend in terms of just, you know, privacy features that are built into a browser. Um, you know, Chrome obviously being the most popular browser, but you are, you know, Google. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I'll say about that. But, um, and I know other browsers like Brave and there's a few others, right, that are out there. And, oh, before I forget, we have to say, uh, say la vie to uh, Internet Explorer. Ah, uh, yes. The other news uh. that came out, which we're not really going to cover, but um, it's finally dead. <laughs> in in the heavens with... I wonder flipping. how many government departments will actually <laughs> stop working now because they're still using Internet Explorer. <laughs> oh, it, well, they'll still use it. Yeah. Funny story. Actually, my wife, um, her previous job, they had a check scanner that takes in, you know, physical checks and you scan them into the bank and for deposits. And it only ran on Internet Explorer, a, a very specific version of Internet Explorer. And <laughs> I wonder now if that if that bank will now be forced to finally what move them to what edge, edge? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> which isn't okay. much of an upgrade but <laughs> in my opinion yep. so um yeah it's amazing how many companies still require a you know a legacy browser like internet explorer because well if it's not broke why fix it yep. right yep. yep so with that i think that's all we have time for this week but uh, thank you both as always Thanks, everybody. And Thank uh, and we will talk to everyone next week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, hit that like and subscribe button. To catch all the latest from the show, visit our website, sharedsecurity.net. Follow us on Twitter at SharedSec and join our Reddit community on the Shared Security Show subreddit.